Hi and welcome to I Stand With Zambia YouTube channel. My name is Mwansa. This channel is not affiliated with any political party, but it is 100% affiliated with being a Zambian. So I wanted to come on today because I came across this viral video on Facebook and it's a video done by a guy named Joseph Usenga. Joseph Usenga, I think he's a, he's a lawyer, a, a young lawyer. You're seeing him in the video when I show it to you. He's talking about this legal concept known as autrefois convict. Autrefois convict is a French word which means already convicted, right? In the United States, you would know it as double jeopardy. And what this means is that if you have been convicted of a crime, you cannot be tried again for the same crime. You get it? So if you were found guilty and you serve time, but then new evidence comes up and they want to try it again, that's not going to happen double jeopardy or trefa convict or if you were found not guilty and new evidence comes again they cannot try you once again so have a watch at this young man joseph Wusenga. i've been thinking about the arrest of Shulufia, the minister of health and it also reminded me about the arrest of ronald totella the Minister of Infrastructure and Development then. What I've come to conclude is that this is a gimmick to conceal criminal activities that are happening in this government. Now, I just want to explain something from the Constitution, Cap 1 of the Laws of Zambia. I want to take you to a provision, and I'll be also taking you to a provision from the Criminal Procedure Act, Cap 88 of the Laws of Zambia. Now, allow me to quote Article 18, sub Article 5, verbatim, on what it says. So, Article 18, sub Article 5 says a person who shows that he has been tried by a competent court for a criminal offense and either convicted or acquitted shall not again be tried for that offense. Now, hold it just there. It says, for a person who can show that they were tried or convicted or acquitted for an offense shall not again be tried for that same offense. It's called ultrafoyes acquit or ultrafoyes convict. But I want us to focus much on ultra force acquit because i explained that now let me just substantiate that by going to the criminal procedure code act on uh, 138 and i'll quote verbatim on what it says it says a person who has been once tried by a court of competent jurisdiction for an offense and convicted or acquitted of such offense shall while such conviction or acquittal remains in force, not be liable to be tried again. Allow me to end there. So, the two pieces of legislation, the Supreme Law and the Criminal Procedure Code, that our courts follow, our law enforcement officers follow, is that any person who is tried for an offense today shall not be tried for the very offense next time. Now, let's start from here. When Ronald Stotela was taken before the Anti-Corruption Commission, he still remained minister. He was escorted by cadres for investigations. And when he went to court, the outcome was an acquittal. So just in case you're not familiar with who this man is, this is Ronald Chitotela. And um, here we have the news headlines at the time. So we see him getting arrested. Uh, by the way, he never actually went to jail. He had posted bail. As soon as his charges were read, he was put on bail. And then his court case came up in July 2019. And he was acquitted, as you can see, in the celebratory um, photographs in this newspaper article. So meaning, in future, should we 
want to prosecute him for the very offense, he's going to raise a defense of ultra force acquit, meaning I was already tried for this offense, you're not bringing it again. Let us come to Chitalu Chilufia. This is the minister that the that Joseph is referring to. So um, this is not the first time that the Anti-Corruption Commission have called him into the office. There was an article back in January that he had been secretly interviewed. So it, the public were not made known of it. They got wind of it after. So that was published and there was, a, there was outrage that the ACC kept it quiet. So uh, back in May, they said that they had concluded their investigations and they issued this official notice to say that they were indeed um, investigating him. Coincidentally, I think like the day after, he, uh, the minister says he's tested positive for coronavirus. So he was out of action for a couple of weeks. But then um, after he came out, well, when he got better, I guess, here we have this uh, news station that um, uh, probably got a tip off from somebody on the inside. Uh, I think it was this week that the minister was coming to be questioned. So when the minister got there, as you can see in the, in the clip coming up, he was formally charged, formally arrested, and then given bail. They said like within 12 minutes or so of him being told you are arrested, they now began to negotiate bail based on his position as a parliamentarian. As soon as he had um, done that, he drives out and goes to parliament and gives an address. Hmm. I think as a result of this stakeout, the Anti-Corruption Commission quickly got together and gave this news briefing of them saying he's been formally charged, formally arrested, we're on the case. Great. So I wish to welcome you to this uh, very short briefing, which is basically just to give you uh, an update on uh, some information regarding the investigations that the Commission has been conducting. So uh, I wish to inform you that the Anti-Corruption Commission has today arrested uh, Minister of Health, Dr. Chitaluchi Lufia. And um, Dr. Chitaluchi Lufia, 47, of House Number 4, Robert Kennedy Clause of Brentwood Avenue in Lusaka was arrested today and he has been charged with four counts of um, being in possession of property reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime. So this is contrary to um, Section 71, subsection 1 of the Forfeiture of Proceeds of Crime Act number 19 of 2010. So this arrest follows uh, investigations that the Commission has been conducting against uh, the Minister in relation to these allegations that I've just talked about. So Honorable Chilifia has uh, since been released on bond and this is in his own recognizance and uh, he's expected to appear before the Magistrate's Court in the SAC on 9th July 2020. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> Summoned by the Anti-Corruption Commission is a stew minister escorted by cadres. The state machinery is behind him. Already we can conclude that when he goes to court, he will be acquitted. Already it's logical. You don't have to think too much. There are signs written all over. He will be acquitted. This means that there is a gimmick here to conceal offenses that these people have been committing. And later, should government change or should certain authorities change, these guys will go scot-free because they will use the defense of ultra-force acquit. 
Follow me very well, fellow citizens. This is a gimmick that these people are using. They want to blindfold us that the law is taking its course and people are being found innocent and acquitted so that no one should ever point fingers at them for having committed offenses because they will say, we already tried, we already acquitted by virtue of Article 18, sub Article 5, by virtue of uh, 138 of the CPC Criminal Procedure Code. These are the defenses they will use. So I remembered after I watched his video and, you know, he mentions two ministers, but then I was like, ah, oh, I remember when Amos Chanda, who was the presidential aide for President Egalungu, I remember him being, you know, charged and arrested and all that stuff. Again, never spent a night in jail. But um, he was charged with um, having property that were believed to be proceeds of crime. So here we have this News Diggers article where they're saying that in count five, Chanda was accused of corruptly receiving $11,000 from Nahas. You'll see Nahas's photograph coming up. He, it was further alleged in count six that Chanda on August 1st, 2017 and May 31st, 2019 possessed $11,000 suspected to be proceeds of crime. The trio had denied the charges and the trial had begun. Now, you may want to know that uh, Amos Chanda was cleared of all the charges. And as you can see here, this that the, um, the Asian uh, man over there, that is his co-accused, Nahas. But uh, yes, he the state clears Amos Chanda he was not guilty of any. He did not receive $11,000 on the 1st of August or the 31st of May, 2017 and 2019. He is innocent. It is clear, it is in public domain, that these people have amassed wealth which they cannot explain, which supersedes their income. A life audit must be done in Zambia and a true reflection of good security wings of justice should be exercised. We cannot afford as a country continue concealing offenses using the security wings, using the courts of law. These are noble men and women who are used to conceal, to hide offenses from the judicial system and the executive. It is quite shameful. I want us to follow as the citizens these cases very well. I said today is the 26th of June. Believe you me, mark my words, Chitalu Chilufia will be acquitted of all these allegations. Mark my words. Thank you. So, having seen all of that, I said to myself, you know, with the way I'm a cases, Yale Safie, I'm a cases in Gayaisa, case Yaisa, via Kudi by ACC, by ACC, watch the announce, via Koti, actually not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. You know, what's happening here like everyone like even now people are just saying ah but the difference with just saying that and with what we now know is that there is a grand scheme being you know behind all of this which is very very sinister you know and so i just wanted to bring it to you what joseph was Joseph Usenga said, and just looking at, you know, do we have anything that we can actually attach this to? Like, is this guy just talking? Or can we actually, you know, uh, connect the dots? Do we actually have something we can work with? And um, to be honest, I think we, I think we actually do have something. I think there is, there is something. Um, and only time will tell whether that is the case. 
Um, however, I think that for God to reveal that at this time is because um, it's something that we need to be aware of, that this could be a possibility, you know. Um, so I bring the videos to you. You make the conclusion. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Please share the video and subscribe and like the video. And remember that we are one Zambia. We are one nation. God is a just judge. And the Bible says that the person who speaks first is always considered right until they are cross-examined. Uyumwai choyo. Ay samukshita cross-examine. Ama akwito zayaya lefu mafie. Ba mushita akwit. Ba mushita akwit. Because in the in the news right now, people are calling for the the firing and the resignation, you know, and people are already this isn't the public domain. People are already making the assumptions that, you know, the reason why this guy is not even um, uh, taking the moral ground and saying, you know what, let me just let me just resign is because he probably knows this is in the bag. And I read in a paper today also online that um, our president was was uh, was responded to say, why should I fire them? Why should I? I'm not going to let people dictate who I should fire and who I should not fire. So, you know, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So I, I'm so grateful that you've stayed to the end. Please share this video. They perish for lack of knowledge. He is standing with Zambia in his own way. The gift God has given him to be able to interpret law. You know, that's something I don't have that gift. I ain't even gonna lie. But I'm so grateful that Joseph and you are standing with Zambia in your own right and using your gifts and your talents in a way that will promote our and, and retain our national identity as Zambians, which as you know, is under attack and also retain our natural resources and demand for good governance. We are one Zambia. We are one nation with 72 languages. God bless you and please share this video and subscribe. Leave your comments in the box and let's get Zambia back on track. Okay, God bless you. Bye.